There are various challenges the nation and the world continue to face. We have seen funds earmarked for capital projects being diverted. There's job losses due to the impact caused by the pandemic. And with that in mind, how has the year been for your region? Equally, also in Kipa region, like uh, the whole of Namibia and Africa at large and globally, we have been impacted uh, adversely by the COVID-19 pandemic. And as you know, it's an uninvited, uncontrolled uh, uh, variable that we don't have control over. And this has eventually resulted in the transformation, the changing of the normal operating protocols. Planned programs have to be redirected or reviewed for us to be able to respond uh, strongly. Mm -hmm. And as you might be aware, central government cabinet already directed and of course put in place a lot of measures that, are, that have been implemented throughout the country to mitigate the negative impact of COVID-19 on the economy and uh, equally so uh, on our health system. Mm -hmm. So our regions equally, we have been part and parcel of this process. And uh, we have actually been implementing the same protocols that have been outlined that are actually impacting the whole region. Mm -hmm. Despite the challenges, how have you fared with terms of the set goals, particularly when it comes to service delivery? We, we have met a lot of our set goals. Uh, despite the various challenges, one of the things that we have learned the most is, is actually to do more with little. Mm -hmm. We are doing more with little through coordination, through active participation of everybody. Mm -hmm. and through active information dissemination and awareness campaigns mm -hmm. where everybody has to understand that we have to do things with a sense of agency for we don't know what tomorrow holds. And secondly, the little, the little that you have at your disposal today, mm -hmm. you just have to make ends meet with that. Mm -hmm. So we have made a lot of uh, impact and we have made a lot of our goals when it comes to land delivery issues, when it comes to housing provision, when it comes to agriculture-related matters, for example, you know that with agriculture, we had AMTA that we visited. We had a regional visit with AMTA mm -hmm. with the aim of increasing and improving poultry and crop production where farmers are given an opportunity to access market through AMTA. You might be aware that we also had undertaken and prioritized the road infrastructure within our region. Mm -hmm. So through stakeholder coordination of Road Authority, Ministry of Work and Transport, and, uh, and uh, Roads Fund Administration and the National Road Safety Council, we have embarked on a number of projects in the region that eventually have brought about the necessary successes, such as the, the upgrade of the road from Okahanja to Ovitoto from a, a gravel to a high standard low volume bitumen steel. And that uh, road is already completed. We haven't had it over. There is an ongoing upgrading of the road between Vinduk and uh, Okahanja of which the final 19-kilometer stretch is actually being impacted upon. There is actually the, the upgrading of the gravel within the gum area, gum settlement and chumque settlement, from the current gravel to a high standard low volume steel, with the aim of eventually linking that whole road network to Port Fontaine. As you might be aware also, in the same vein, the road authority have already appointed a, a contractor or a consultant who will do the detailed design of the Hurot Fontaine Chumque Gum Road for upgrading it to high standard low volume steel. To add to that, the, the, the road between Okahanja and Okonjatu as well, 193 kilometers plus minus, have already gone to detailed design. However, as we are talking now, we are at a point of looking into the possibility that this road must be a high standard, high volume, because it's having a, high, a heavy traffic such as trucks that are moving on that road. So it's important that you need to keep it at that level. Mm -hmm. Just to add on the road safety issues as well, we had a successful meeting with the National Road Safety Council. You might be aware that the road carnage, the, the accidents that are happening between Okahanja, Ochoarongo, Ochoarongo and Otavi, is a national concern. And this equally is actually a cause of concern to us as regional leadership. And one of the proposals that we have on the table is that when the resources permit through good coordination among the various stakeholders, we need to strongly consider the possibility of converting these roads into dual carriage ways. Mm -hmm. That's very important because when you make them dual carriage way, already you are going to ease the burden on, on, on the flow of traffic, 
we are going to drastically reduce the accidents on the roads because these roads are really taking a toll on our population by actually killing our people. And we need to work on that very strongly. So that's one of the projects that come next year. We want to make it a priority. For now, you know that the resources do not allow much to be done, but through coordination it can be done. So. Quite a great list of achievements despite the challenges. Now, how will your office as central government's representative at regional level work with other stakeholders to remedy or even cushion the prevailing effects of COVID-19 on the economy and ultimately on the livelihood of the people? Our approach is much on our shared responsibilities. Mm -hmm. It is whereby every institution needs to understand that through a synergical approach, we are able to mitigate the impact because we can share resources, we share strategies and approaches. One of the key things that I can highlight as far as this is concerned, for example, at Caltfeld, we had an issue with a switch pond where a child uh, drowned in the, in the switch pond, but through coordination and everything, we managed to bring in the municipality of Oshuarongo with a firefighting department, the regional council, the settlement office and everybody together with the community for us to meet to, to assist the situation. But we didn't end there. The regional council went further and made a tender available, advertised it through procurement system. A consultant was appointed, a contractor was appointed, who is now busy fencing of that project successfully. Going forward, as you know that through coordination, we had the issue of locus that nearly caused havoc in the region. But directed by the Ministry of Agriculture, we managed to bring in a lot of effort together, the defense forces and everybody else, for us to fight these locus successful as we are talking the locus is a, is a thing of the past we are talking of accelerated land delivery in our region as one of the big projects so far we have delivered 2087 airways since last year and this is through coordination now the focus come next year on land delivery is that we need to prioritize the making land available for the middle to low income groups and secondly we are coming up with a concept in the Shogunjupa region which is gaining momentum, whereby we are creating suburbs for men and women in uniform. The aim is to ensure that it has to be a win-win situation. Men and women in uniform do qualify through their housing subsidies to buy houses. The municipality is having land available that they can sell. So obviously the municipality is able to sell their land. The men and women in uniform are able to buy land. But importantly, to restore the dignity of saying that this location is for men and women in uniform, whatever that happens there, let them be able to manage their affairs to ensure that not just a person wake up in a certain area and tomorrow you go arrest your neighbor, the next day you come back to the same house. We need to see how best we can mitigate these things. So the municipalities, all five of them are very responsive and they are looking very positively into this matter and we are, we are foreseeing a strong focus. Mm -hmm. through, through, through this coordination, rural electrification is a key issue. In the Shodanjupa region, for example, we are the only region with two off-grid systems nationally. That is an off-grid system solar plant in Chumque and the solar plant in Gam. So now, since we took office, we managed to, through the Ministry of Mines and Energy, to increase the connectivity whereby additional 400 houses in Gam have been connected to the off-grid system. Mm -hmm. As we are talking, we have launched electricity program from Roida Gate through Ma uh, Matako to Mangeti. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, this line is already completed through the funding from the Ministry of Mines and Energy and many other programs that we are embarking on. Mm -hmm. We managed to upgrade the school at Matako through the funding from MTC, where six classroom and a storeroom was put up. So there are a lot of other programs that we are looking at, youth, 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 and youth, and youth. What we are focusing on is to make sure that we put up a youth council that will be advising governor's office and regional council on youth matters. The same goes with the disability council that we are putting up at the regional level. Mm -hmm. You know that we have received 20, 24 wheelchairs through the office of the, of the governor of Oshana who coordinated with a good company in Oshana region that eventually bought 314 wheelchairs for the whole Namibia. But the governor decided to share with everyone and eventually these chairs are available and we have shared them equally with our people in the region also. Governor, that is definitely quite a good list of achievements that your region has been able to implement and we'll be looking forward to next year just to see how you'll be faring.
in your region. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for joining us. And uh, finally, I would like to say COVID-19 is upon us. The Omicron variant is busy spreading very fast. We need to take care of ourselves, mask up every time. Oshodonjupa region is ready. We have made sure that we beef up our systems accordingly. The vaccination rate has increased with a target of 97,000. So far, we have managed to vaccinate in excess of 45,000. So we are about to hit our target. But on top of it all, let us protect ourselves and those that are frail and vulnerable. Let us protect ourselves. Let's ensure that we observe the road safety rules and regulations for us to arrive alive. Let's enjoy our festive season and Happy New Year in advance. God bless us. God bless Namibia.